Hello and welcome to a master class on business texting, today's trends and the future. This is a webinar coming to you from ZipWhip headquarters, which is currently uh, <laughs> in remote mode. I'm your host of the webinar, Keith Hitchcock, digital content producer at ZipWhip. And ZipWhip is a company that helps businesses communicate with customers a way that their customers prefer, and that is texting. So I want to acknowledge at the top that we are all experiencing uh, a coronavirus crisis at the moment of recording this. And it's a challenging time for a lot of businesses and people, um, including us. Um, and I, I do want to let you know that ZipWhip is doing what we can to help out, including offering our texting product to um, as pro, pro bono for nonprofits who are on the front lines of the crisis. And we're also working to compile some resources for how to use texting in a crisis like the one we're in right now. Um, I want to point out that we have another webinar coming up just next week on Tuesday, um, which is how to use texting to reach customers during the coronavirus crisis. Um, and that happens on Tuesday at uh, the 31st at 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, we're also sharing customer stories that we're hearing from around the country of businesses, how businesses are quickly adapting um, and using texting to help in their communication. Um, I want to mention that we uh, are going to be referencing the 2020 State of Texting Report. Um, and you can check it out if you want right now and follow along if you like. It, you can find that at zipwhip.com slash SOT2020. Other than that, let's get right to it. I want to introduce James Lapick. He is the Chief Technology Officer at Zipwhip. Let's see if he if he's, can join us here. There you are. Hey, Keith. Um, Hey, James, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm so excited about this webinar. Um, yeah, tell happy us a little, to be here. Tell us a little bit more about what you do at ZipWhip. Yeah, as you mentioned, I'm the Chief Technology Officer. I'm also one of the co-founders here at ZipWhip, um, broadcasting to you from my uh, downstairs home office, like I'm sure a lot of people are, uh, are dealing with right now. So we'll see if my kids can uh, kind of stay out of the room at least for a few minutes. But um, yeah, glad to be here. I, I deal with the uh, innovation and technology strategy side of ZipWhip, including um, how we're, um, you know, as you mentioned, with a lot of this stuff going on right now with uh, the coronavirus, it's really uh, humbling to take part in uh, such a critical part of communications. And it's um, it's something I'm really happy that we're able to, to help folks with. Yeah, yeah, it feels good, um, despite despite it all. Um, I do want to mention we have some other folks in our moderation cave who are helping behind the scenes to drop some information into chat. So uh, I see that uh, Natalie dropped in a link to both uh, the state of texting there and that webinar. So feel free to check that out. Um, they're also help to, there to help with other issues. Um, so if you've got to know us a little bit, let's get to know you. This is something that we like to do. <clears throat> um, let's take a quick poll. Um, get a current read of, of what your, um, well, how does your company currently text with customers? And uh, feel free to take a moment to engage with that. And then uh, it'll be fun to see the results. So it's always interesting to see where people are. I'll give another couple of seconds for you to engage with that. And now let's take a look at the results. So there's a spread here. Hey, we have a lot of, of our customers online. So glad you are joining us today. Welcome. <laughs> all right. Um, thanks for playing with that. Now that we've all met each other, let us move on to a little bit more of uh, housekeeping here. Um, if you're uh, unfamiliar with the GoToWebinar app, it's pretty simple. Um, I do want to call your attention to the question window, which is a place where you can drop both questions and comments along the way. Um, those come just to us and our moderators, so uh, don't worry about um, asking any questions that uh, no one else will see those. So um, we will have some dedicated time at the end to answer those questions. And uh, as a thank you for completing our brief survey at the end of the webinar, I'm going to be sending out uh, in a follow up email, send you the a video recording of this. Uh, PDF of all the slides and uh, a bunch of other help, helpful links that uh, we hope will be helpful. Um, we are showcasing our keyword feature today. Um, our customers will know this one, or you should know this one. Uh, you can text the, the keyword trends, uh, just that word, trends, to this number, 
and, and we'll be sending you some of those links uh, to whatever device you're texting us with. Um, then you, it'll help you go deeper with this content. So with that, um, I want to dive in. James brought in this amazingly uh, comprehensive deck that we're going to try to get through in a half, a half an hour. Um, so let's best. go. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, today's trends. So the, the concept of, of texting for business, James, is relatively new. So can you help us pull back a little bit and give us the, the 10,000 foot view of business texting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as you mentioned, it's it's newer, uh, I would say, in terms of uh, business texting. I mean, getting texts from a business, I think, has been around a while. I'm sure a lot of people have gotten one-way alerts from their airline or deliveries over the years. But the yeah. trend that's really kind of really started to evolve in the last few years is this engaging two-way uh, texting channel with a business. And as you can see, um, you know, this stat alone, 68% of, um, of folks are communicating over text with a business, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. More and more and more, right? Yeah. We feel like we're just at the tip of the iceberg. I mean, frankly, I've been involved in text messaging since I, you know, since it started, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. kind of in my entire career somehow, but, um, it it's really evolved um and it's getting more and more engaging it's funny i think now to where it's at in terms of um in terms of its evolution and it feels like it's more relevant now than maybe when i got into it 20 years ago which is kind of interesting i mean kind of people think of you know texting as this old technology but it's really ubiquitous and it's really powerful especially uh for a business to quickly get info to a customer so yeah. i i think some of these are pretty interesting stats as well um, you get people, I mean, 43% proactively are texting a business. Um, yeah. A lot of this has to do with the fact that um, a business phone number, you can't distinguish, at least in the in the North American market, what number is a mobile number and which one's not. So people are just assuming that they can text numbers. And I think that's where we see a lot of traction with being able to turn on existing business phone numbers and kind of complete that circuit. I know everybody's gotten a call they've ignored and uh, said, don't call me, text me. Um, yeah. We help complete that. This one's amazing too. Uh, have you ever texted a business and not gotten a response back? A third of people saying yes. Yeah. It, well, I mean, just like I said, think about how many times you've ignored a phone call that you, you should probably take, but nobody answers the phone anymore. You ignore it, you text it back saying, don't call me, text me, and then you get an error. Um, our, our goal is to try to always have that go through and not give you that error anymore for that 30 30 plus percent of people. Right. Um, I think this one's really interesting too. I mean, this is uh, how often folks are receiving, uh, sender receiving texts from a business. Um, mm -hmm. You know, 14% once a day. I mean, that's a, that's a stat that we continue to see grow year over year. Um, 20, I mean, if you look at this weekly, you've got 20, 20 plus percent of people that are texting with businesses weekly. And we're yeah. really, we're really uh, excited to see that continue to grow. Um, I don't know if you have thoughts on this, Keith, but this is, that's one that always excites me. Yeah. Well, it, you're, you're painting the picture that it's, th that we really are at the tip of the tip of the iceberg at this point. Um, and it's, it's, just, and it's continuing to grow. We're seeing that year over year. So yeah. why is it though? So let's talk about this point in time. Why, why do you, why do you feel like we, that the business world is at this inflection point right now? Well, I, I think that, um, everyone's busy and nobody wants to be on hold and nobody wants to answer the phone. But, you know, even if it's important, you, you got a lot of stuff going on. I think everybody's, uh, everybody's feeling that kind of overwhelmed uh, information overload almost between email and phone calls and, you know, and all of that. And text is, is what people want. And it's not just for millennials. I mean, we see this across the board. I know there's some great stats in the report around uh, different, generations that are engaging with text and it's all of them it's everybody because it's completely mm -hmm. ubiquitous um and you know i'm sure you know this customers are tied to their phone um yeah. you know it, it never leaves your pocket and right. having that direct line into somebody's pocket with the read rate that you get off sms is really powerful yeah here's and, one how many times per day do you check your phone it's it's scary but true um <laughs> i, I you know, I think this is just kind of the world we're living in. We're such a completely connected, um, connected world now that this, 
I'm sure there's triple digit uh, phone checkers that we didn't account for in here too. <laughs> That's right. There was not a field for that. And then uh, how soon after waking up in the morning, do you check your check your cell phone? That's powerful, too. Yeah. 20% uh, of people immediately. I think I'm in that group for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I think that the businesses are, are the reason when you ask the question of why now and why is this uh, inflection point happening? I think that Businesses have really uh, seen that customers are demanding to do things the way that they want to engage. And customers, you go where the water is. I mean, if the customers are demanding to engage with you this way, then you as a business have to go and interact with them. I mean, this is, um, it's a consumer preference for sure. And the nice thing about texting is that it's, it's a medium that has a lot of unwritten rules that folks just understand. It, it can be used for you know, informational type of communications as well as a, as a rich uh, conversational interaction. And all of these are kind of acceptable means to use it. And this, this proactively text to business, I think just goes to show, you know, if 40 plus percent of people are reaching out to a business uh, as text as a first communication channel, that's really showing that yes, the consumer is demanding this. And you as a business, you're probably getting messages today that Maybe they're the ones that are in that 30% that are failing that you're not receiving and you need to, uh, you need to listen to your customers. Yeah. You, you brought, you, you thought this one was interesting too. They, 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 they're not, they're not necessarily going to install your app, right? Yeah. This is one I, I really think has changed, uh, you know, as we've moved into this, the, the world kind of changed with the iPhone and the smartphone coming to market. Um, app fatigue. I think people kind of went through this wave of innovation around apps. Um, and you have probably had a, a, every brand's app on your phone at one point. And now I think it's really people have kind of gotten over that and are really just using stuff that's core. And what we found is that it's, it's, I mean, one, it's really expensive to go build an app and it's really hard to get people not only to install it, but to keep it on their phone, you have to have continuous value. And so for things where maybe you're just doing appointment scheduling, that's something you can completely do over text or, uh, or some combination of digital channels that doesn't need an app. And frankly, the customer doesn't want it anyway. So I don't think this, this shouldn't surprise anybody. Um, this one I'm sure feels pretty at home to a lot of people. How many people install and then delete an app right away because it doesn't provide them enough value. Yeah. yeah. And I, this, this as well, I mean, the engagement rate around email and phone calls is really down. I mean, nobody's answering the phone anymore and email inboxes are cluttered. Whereas on your phone, you probably have little to no unread text messages. Um, it's definitely something you got to keep in mind around uh, why that is. And you don't want to information overload people. You don't want to try to shove an email into a text, but utilize the channel for the right way to get a hold of your customers. So this one, we see this over and over, Keith, when a business goes and adopts messaging or text messaging into their interactions with the customer, they find that it makes it easy to get a hold of them. We've had so many stories over the years of folks that are trying to confirm appointments, that are trying to just get a hold of somebody to renew an insurance policy, and nobody answers the phone. Once they start engaging over this channel, then all of a sudden those interactions become super easy and they become really efficient on the business side and they become preferred on the consumer side. So now instead of chasing people down to confirm appointments for half a day, you can knock that out right away first thing in the morning, fill more seats, stop the no-shows and things like that. So it's uh, it's almost it, it's it's almost crazy how quick you can go see this kind of shift happen in your business. You don't have to wait months for people to adopt it. They get it almost instantly. We actually get people on their first day of service see this kind of engagement. Yeah, right. And it helps build the relationship with the customer um, by adding in the two-way messaging component. And when somebody not only is getting an alert about an appointment or, or some alert on their account, now all of a sudden they can richly interact with you. It opens up this whole other side of customer loyalty and this engagement with the customer, which I think is what everybody's looking for. Um, and especially in this time now where you've got a lot of, uh, with this coronavirus um, chaos going on, 
this is providing a way for businesses to interact with their customers and let them keep them informed of what's going on and keep that relationship alive, even though we might all be stuck in our house and um, businesses are having to adapt. And this is, um, we're seeing a lot of really cool use cases where people are able to extend that relationship even further, even though business is kind of changing right now. Well, that's a great segue into our, our my next question, um, which, uh, you already you already anticipated was which is what are the specific ways that businesses are using messaging right now and a lot of our, our customers I'm, I'm sure are are doing a lot of these yeah i know we talked about a few of these already um you know alerts and reminders is pretty is a pretty uh, pretty easy to get one scheduling and such uh, i think some interesting ones to call out here is we see a lot of success on the billing and collection side um, you know, as you go and send somebody a payment reminder over text, we have a lot of statistics around the collection of that payment is actually much more likely to succeed or move along if you notify them over text versus email or leaving a voicemail. Um, I think those are really interesting use cases. On the, on the recruiting side, um, just if, you, if you've ever been involved of trying to fill a position, you know that it's always kind of, you, you know, you're competing a lot for, uh, for talent and you're trying to make sure that you're having that, uh, that process go smooth for the candidate. And messaging is a really awesome, discreet way in order to, you know, quickly engage. And there's not a lot of, you cut out all the lag time. And so there's a lot of really cool use cases we see all the time. That's just calling out a couple. Um, but every day we see new use cases. I'm always kind yeah. of surprised. Almost every week I see a new one. And I'm like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. That like makes the life way easier for that guy. Yeah, totally. In a way, it's kind of the wild west of, of tech. It's still the wild west of, of texting and people are still finding new ways to use it. And you, you brought, I know you brought in some other examples later on. So we'll, we'll see those. Yeah. Um, but question is, even in its, its short history, um, you, you talked about the, the point, the moment in time where we are right now, um, but we have made some advances from the beginning. Um, so can you talk us through a little bit through Give us the brief history of this uh, evolution. Yeah, it, you know, the uh, texting medium, it started out very, you know, very humble. It was just a way for for two people to communicate. It was all on one carrier. And then we kind of figured out as an industry how to expand that to be able to talk to anybody. And then we started to see some use cases come in um, around, you know, maybe engaging with a TV show over over text. And then it kind of business side turned into a lot of one-way alerting, you know, maybe gate change alerts or airline alerts, that kind of thing. And that had gone on for a while. And then what happened is we saw this demand for engagement. And that's where we really started, started to see it blossom with the two-way conversational messaging component. And I think that uh, where we're at now, Keith, is it's really kind of um, continuing to advance every day. And we see this with a lot of the workflow automation that's coming in that a business can do. So I know that one of the questions you showed earlier was, are you texting with your customers today over a cell phone? And if you're a, a one person business, that probably, that, that might work for you, but it's really hard if you have, um, if you have multiple employees or you have a lot of uh, customers, managing that on your cell phone with your thumbs is incredibly difficult. And so we, we've seen this just uh, major adoption in terms of tooling and automation that we can do. Um, I know we, you called out earlier some of the things we do around keywords, being able to quickly disseminate information. Um, we have other features. These are a few of them around having kind of quick dynamic templates already set up so you can have kind of predefined uh, content that you can send to people, schedule messages for later. But we're seeing a lot of really cool stuff. Once you go and integrate, uh, maybe with one of our CRM integrations or one you build yourself with our API, um, you can do some really cool stuff when you start to bring business workflow into the texting channel and you can have a lot of personalized um, back and forths. Cool. Um, I mentioned, uh, foreshadowed this, uh, this one that uh, talking about some of, what, what are some of the innovations that you have seen out there? Uh, the, there, there is so many cool use cases. Like I said, just a couple here that are really interesting to point out is, um, you know, like this example with bar three, they use it for wait list notifications. So as people are waiting to get on uh, into a class that might be full, they have this completely automated where they'll be able to send out to um, to folks the, uh, oh, sorry, um, 
they'll be able to send out to folks uh, a reminder that they're now eligible to pop into this class. So instead of having to make that phone call 50 times out, uh, they're able to do that all in one shot and fill that wait list right away. Um, another really powerful one, um, if you've ever had a, a car accident where you've had to go and file an insurance claim, it's not the most pleasant experience to go through, uh, especially if you have to go and download the app or log in and upload photos. Being able yeah. to do that over picture messaging, we've seen huge, huge advances in. So, in, you know, send me a picture of the damaged vehicle, um, be able to uh, quickly and efficiently get that claim processed has been really, really powerful. All right, you have taken us through the, the past and the present of business texting. So let's talk about the future. What is the future of texting for business? Well, the future of business texting is uh, is continuing to evolve and, in, and innovate. Um, we love our, our three-letter acronyms, so I'm going to give you another one, Keith. It's uh, RCS, which is Rich Communication Services. Um, that's kind of a, a thing that we've been working on for years in the industry to bring really rich um, features into SMS. So if you've ever used Facebook Messenger, iMessage, things like this, you notice that there's some cool features that SMS doesn't have, like see when somebody's typing, look at uh, uh, if they read the message, and then be able to exchange like really high quality images and video. This is something that um, is really cool, but you have to download an app. So the cool thing that RCS does for us is it allows us to bring some of those features into something super ubiquitous like SMS. So it's taken a long time because every every phone and every carrier and every everything has to be upgraded to support it. But we're finally getting to that point, as you showed. You know, a third of people are starting to get get their eyes on some of these features, which is neat. Um, and we feel like over the next 12 to 18 months, this is gonna this is gonna be an experience that a lot of people will just start to get used to on the SMS medium. Can I quote you on that? 12 to 18 months. I I think so. I, we're working really <laughs> hard over here on it. Definitely. Yeah, well, it's not it's not just up to us, right? It's this industry wide. There thing. is, like I said, it's a it's a big upgrade kind of across the board, um, but it's made major advancements in the last in the last year alone has been more progress on it than I've seen in a long time. And there's a lot yeah. of demand, you know. Like I said, consumers will demand. That's what happened here. Um, it kind of was something on the back burner for a long time, but the consumers demanded it, and now it's being pulled forward. Yeah, this is just you brought in also some of the. Some so graphics is, here of the features. I think this is a cool thing to show off. We did this with the Sacramento Kings, but this is one of the features of RCS we're really excited about. It gives you almost like a caller ID. Um, this isn't a contact or a V card you have to save. It'll just come with your name and logo. So when you reach out to your customers, your your branding will be uh, front and center for them. Yeah, so cool. Um, yeah, it's going to be powerful when it when it all rolls out. And are, are there any other aspects of the the future? of business texting i i'm really excited about a lot of stuff um the chatbot automation ai piece is uh, is really interesting like i said we're seeing a lot of uh a lot of really positive things going on in terms of getting those workflow automations sorted out and so bringing in um some ai and and chat and automation more automation into that is really key so imagine Imagine if you need to reschedule uh, an appointment you have, Keith, and it's after hours and you want to do something first thing in the morning. If you could engage that business over messaging and there's an easy way for you just to pick out times on the calendar and book yourself without having to talk to anybody, super powerful. On the other hand, we also have heard loud and clear from consumers that what they don't want is an IVR jail. They don't want to feel like they're just going through a, a myriad of of menus um, yeah. like they do on a calling system you know everybody hits zero to get to the operator what we don't want to do is bring that to texting because that that will ruin uh that will ruin that aspect of it and i don't think that we've completely solved how to blend um this human and chatbot thing together but we're super hyper conscious of that interaction here at zip whip um, as you can see from this you know three quarters of people want to be talking to a person when they're talking to a business um, right. and a lot of that is that just that operator mentality. You want to be able to get somebody that can help you with your problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, 
and this and this one is another interesting one. I I think that we're still at the tip of the iceberg in terms of AI. Um, it there's great advancements there, and there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff that we've seen our customers do, but I still feel like we're at the beginning of having it completely figured out of how can I how can I transfer, if my problem gets too complicated, how do I move it over to the right place and make sure that all the information I've already given uh, is accounted for when it's handed off. And that's something you know nobody wants to be repeating themselves. All right, you've covered the past, the present, and the future of business texting. Let's do a brief recap, uh, James. Yeah, business texting, keep that we've just seen uh, our message volumes and customers continue to grow over the years. It's phenomenal, the traction we've had. It's a preferred medium. The customers that you're communicating with are demanding it. They're probably texting you today. If you're not getting those messages, we can help. Um, and uh, like I just mentioned on the chatbot side, we're working on a lot of innovation around automation when it comes to AI. And it is it is going to be some really cool stuff coming with RCS. I think there's a lot of opportunity um, in that rich innovation side too, as well, Keith, around um, incorporating things like payments into uh, future uh, transactions. So imagine imagine all of a sudden you're not just sending a notification for a bill that's due, you're now uh, collecting it right in the line of the messaging app. So a lot yeah. a lot of bright future ahead. Cool. That was so helpful and informative. And I'm sure there's there's some questions that are coming up. So if there are questions coming up for you, go ahead and drop those in the, the question window right now. And we will uh, see if we can stump James here on one or two questions before we have to close up the webinar. Um, here is one to begin with. Uh, do you have API solutions? I think you mentioned that, but uh, we do. So we do have it to where you can you can just purchase access to our messaging API and you can completely build your own adventure. Where we've seen a lot of customers uh, have success is you can also take our our software products, which is think of it as just a an, almost like an Outlook for texting interface that you can use, and then extending that with the API. So it all works together. Um, and actually, we've seen some really awesome use cases where people will be using our software for the conversational part, and then they'll uh, weave our API into some of their backend systems to have a really rich uh, interaction, like we mentioned with maybe the waitlist reminder scenario. Yeah, great. Um, have time for one or two more questions here. Um, here is one. Is ZipWhip TCPA compliant? First of all, what is TCPA, and is ZipWhip TCPA compliant? Uh, so for those that don't know, TCPA is the Telephone Consumer Protection Act. It's a FCC uh, thing that basically protects consumers from unwanted calls or texts. Um, so TCPA compliance is complicated. We've actually published a, an ebook online, Keith, that we can we can send some information about uh, where that's located, about how you as a business can ensure that you're doing things in a compliant way. We make uh, the tools for you to manage that compliance. So there's no really such thing as a TCPA compliant tool. We give you kind of the, the tool set for you to manage that yourself. And we have a, a lot of materials online in our ebook to help you kind of navigate those waters. Great. Uh, we'll do one last one here. Um, someone says it, a really useful feature would be to be able to create tags to be able to segment clients. Is that possible? Uh, it's a conversation that we're having within our uh, our product roadmap for sure. Um, being able to now that we're having a lot of these rich interactions, uh, keeping them organized is definitely something we've heard from our customers about um, making sure that they can tag additional um, metadata onto the conversations as well as maybe mark them as done and tend to it later or reminder and get back to. So we've um, we'll welcome uh, more feedback on that, but it's something that our product team is hard hard working on. Great. Hey, well, if there are some questions that we didn't get to, um, I apologize, and we'll do our best to answer those uh, moving forward, uh, potentially via email. Um, and hopefully mo our moderators were also answering some questions there for you. Um, as we been, begin to close up here, I want to uh, reiterate that, uh, that keyword uh, feature that we are showcasing here. If you text trends to that number, and you actually have to turn off your signature because it's just that word. Um, uh, 
we'll send you some some other links to go deeper with this this content. And in that follow up email, you just made me think I'll I'll, I'll plan to include that uh, link to the TCPA ebook. Um, I'll also include a link to uh, if you haven't found it yet um, the the 2020 state of texting report from which James was citing all those stats. Um, there's a lot of other information in there um, that uh, can be helpful as you are planning your your texting strategy. Um, I want to call out again that uh, that webinar that we're doing next Tuesday, which is the how to text how to use texting to reach customers during the coronavirus crisis. Um, that's a special one that we've been um, doing a lot of work very quickly to put together. Um, so hopefully you can join us for that next Tuesday. I will send a link to that also in the email. Um, so thanks again for joining us, James. Thank you so much for being here and for um, regaling us with it, all this, this this knowledge. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Keith. And uh, one one uh, well, one other reminder is when when the uh, this uh, webinar closes, uh, a survey is going to pop up on your screen. If you can just take thirty seconds to uh, fill that out, it helps us do what we do here. Um, so appreciate that and uh, look for that follow-up email from me and uh, just sending warm wishes to you all out there. Thanks again for joining and take care. Bye-bye.